If you are what you say you are A superstar Then have no fear The camera's here Hey YouTube, welcome back to Jerry's NBA Talk TV I'm NBA Jerry and thank you for watching uh, December 2nd, 2010 uh, this is a game that I've been waiting for ever since the schedule come out, came out, and a lot of people have been waiting on. Uh, if you, if I had to choose between the Laker Miami Christmas game or this game between the Cavs and Miami Heat December second, uh, I would definitely choose this game. I have a very special guest on today. He's actually the correspondent for the Cleveland Cavaliers for Jerry's NBA Talk TV. This guy's an avid uh, fan of the Cavs. He knows them up and down, inside out. He's an expert. And he is an absolute expert on all Cleveland sports. I brought him on today because I think it was time to not only do a dual commentary with him, but actually talk about what's going on uh, between the Miami Heat and the Cleveland Cavaliers. So without further ado, let me introduce the host of the new Cleveland Cavs uh, channel. Uh, his name is Isaiah. Welcome to the show, Isaiah. Thanks a lot, man. Uh Really big fan of your show, man. I watch all your videos, and um, I'm just happy to be a correspondent of you uh, and doing this commentary. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of yours, too. I watch all your shows. Uh, you're doing a great job being a correspondent. Thank you very much. Uh, good to know. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Uh, also, he has another channel called You Are All Witnesses 23. That's his main channel, uh, but for NBA purposes, the new Cleveland Cavs, he does that for uh, strictly Cleveland Cavaliers. But the you are all witnesses 23, he does that for everything else. So I'll let him tell you all this thing first. But first, let's talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, tell me your thoughts as an as the expert of the team. Tell me your thoughts on the team so far, uh, what you're liking, and what you're disappointed with so far. Well, so far, I think that um, we are exceeding a lot of people's expectations. We had a lot of people that thought we would struggle terribly after losing the seven years centerpiece for our team. Um, they really aren't doing much better than I thought they would. I mean, I, I thought that we would be. I mean, our record doesn't reflect how good we are, but um, I thought we would be right around this level after LeBron left. I always believed we did have talent here, that the offense did not benefit everybody. And uh, uh, there's not too many things that stand out because I was expecting this. I mean, what I am pleased is uh, with is that as uh, the, the overall passing of everybody on the team. I mean, obviously, when LeBron was here, the ball was in his hands. He was making most of the decisions. But um, when other people here are given the chance to pass, uh, you see that they are very good at it. Also, when they're given the chance to score as well. I mean, uh, when, for instance, Daniel Gibson, when he was here in the old system, he was basically a stand behind the arc, catch and shoot, three point shooter. But now we're seeing he comes off the bench and does a little bit of everything. He can drive. He can defend. Um, he makes a very good defensive plays. Um, Mo Williams, we're finding out, is actually a pretty good closer. He had, we owe a few of our wins to him. He came in and really closed out those games. i um, sure you saw his buzzer beater against Milwaukee. Uh, we got a couple of young players, uh, such as Ryan Hollins. Um, he is a very good player on the defensive end. I think he's pretty underrated. Um, that, that is one of the things I'm pleased with is him. I did not expect... Uh, all that much from him coming in, but he provides a good spark off the bench, a, uh, a much-needed presence at the center position, and he also has himself a pretty nice offensive game. He's got a he's a good free-throw shooter. Uh, he's got himself a jump shot and a hook shot. You just don't get to see very much of that because he's he's still he's very foul-prone. He always has been. Mm -hmm. um, Anderson Verjao, he is he's had an offensive game, but. Um, He's losing confidence in his jump shot, but when he is confident, he can knock down a jump shot. Um, I'm pleased with the way this team plays in the Princeton offense when they actually play it, but one of the things I'm displeased with is they don't seem to believe in that system, and sometimes they get away from it and go back to the old way of doing things, and that is the half-court game, the sluggish half-court game of holding the ball, and uh, they have lost a few games because of that. And another thing I'm also disappointed with is our overall team defense. I mean, we have uh, most of the guys here that uh, played on the team last year and the year before when we were a very good defensive team, and uh, we're not so good defensively anymore. But um, I'm sure once they uh, start to gel on the defensive end, because it's mostly people are missing assignments, they're not rotating. But um, I think, excuse me, once we have a little bit more time to gel defensively, that will be a pretty good defensive team. All right, that you, you couldn't have said it better, man. That was that was an excellent 
uh, assessment of your team, great breakdown. And this is exactly why I had you as a correspondent. You know your team in and out, and uh, you, I couldn't have said it better. Thanks. Now, here's my question. Since LeBron has left, obviously uh, everything is different now because, you know, everything's not going through him, like you said. Uh, they're not doing the Mike Brown half-court offense. They're doing the Princeton with Byron Scott. What are your overall thoughts about Byron Scott so far as the coach, uh, your offensive system, and your defensive system so far? Well, I think Byron Scott's just the kind of coach we need. We needed a hard post coach who has been there. He hasn't won an NBA championship, but he still has a very impressive resume. Um, he is hard on the players, especially the young players such as J.J., that uh, we really need to come. And I like his offense and defensive systems very much. It's just that our players, I mean, nobody on this team has run an offense like the Princeton, and they're all getting used to it. I think everybody on this team has the ability to excel in this offense, but they just need some time to adjust. I mean, you're seeing a lot of error passes. They try to get the ball down the court a little bit too fast. They try to finish too fast. Now, when they're taking their time and just uh, just letting themselves play and having fun out there with the new system, they run it pretty good. But the problem is getting uh, playing it consistently for four quarters. That's been our biggest problem with this. When they're able to do that, I'm very pleased. Now, the, the biggest problem, though, is their the defense, uh, they're really struggling at it right now. That's mostly because um, no one really knows what they're doing. No one really knows their rotations. I mean, Scott's system... Uh, I don't want to say it doesn't emphasize defense as much as Mike Brown's system, but um, it's a little bit less intense than Mike Brown's system. And I knew when Mike Brown left that our defense would struggle, and so it is. But um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Byron Scott. I'm very glad he's here. And I think with some time that we can be a pretty good team once we have a couple more pieces. And uh, as long as we keep Byron Scott around, we're going to be fine. And I agree. And I wish uh, LeBron would have thought about that before he left. But, you know. You can't do nothing about it now, but yeah, I, I agree with what you said. Now, as far as your your core is concerned, the the, the team that was, uh, you know, that won the past regular season titles, as far as having the best record in the NBA the last two seasons. Uh, what are your feelings now about you know Mo Williams, Andy, uh, JJ, you know all of those guys as a group? Uh, how have they recovered as far as LeBron leaving them gelling together? and then moving forward with the new Cleveland Cavaliers? Well, I think that they are uh, on the basketball court. They are over it. Um, you see that, like I said, Mo, his, he's really done well in closing out a couple of games. That's a talent he's had all along. It was evident in Milwaukee, and people kind of forgot it here. Andy Berejao, I really, you know, I thought his offensive numbers would go down because LeBron set him up for a lot of his plays, a lot of easy, easy plays around the basket because so much attention was drawn to LeBron. And uh, it allowed him to slide in and uh, get easy layups and dunks. But on the defensive end, which is what he's known for, his game hasn't changed at all. He's still that guy. He comes in. He, he, he gives it all every night. It's like there's three of them out there some nights. Um, yeah. Even when he's injured, he goes out there and uh, just makes big plays, makes key blocks, key rebounds. Um, I really did not to see uh, expect to see that much change in Anderson Barajal, except on the offensive end. And uh, he is developing his jumper. It's there, but uh, he just needs to knock it down on a consistent basis. And he'll make up for those points he's losing without LeBron. Now, J.J., um, wait, he has not been playing too good these last few games. Um, he played well against Memphis, and that's because uh, he was getting the ball where he was comfortable. And that was in the low post or just uh, grabbing a garbage basket and uh, knocking it down from there. Uh, in the Boston game, this game we last played, and uh, some of the previous games before Memphis, he uh, kept getting the ball. He was not comfortable with it on the elbow or just uh, way far out on the block where um, he is not comfortable knocking down that jumper. And uh, he still does not have a, an excellent driving game, so he really can't do much with the ball from out there. But when he has confidence in knocking down his jumpers, and um, this is the big thing, when he runs the floor, he is, he's a great um He's a great scorer when he runs the floor. Um, if he receives the ball, if somebody passes it to him from the open court, and he's down low. Um, he always makes plays. But uh, w once he realizes that uh, where his sweet spots are, then I think he's going to be an all-star someday in the future. And uh, obviously, I think they were pretty shaken by LeBron leaving, but so far they've responded to it pretty well. Now, Daniel Gibson, like I said earlier, he was considered a, a core part of this team. Um not so much at the end of last year. He spent a lot of time on the bench, but we're starting to see him flourish. And uh, 
uh, he is the type of guard that would flourish under the Prince, and we're starting to see that. He is, uh, he's getting a lot more time with the uh, ball in his hands. He's one of those guys that's really effective with the ball in his hands, and uh, he's able to sink some clutch threes, especially off the dribble, and uh, just getting a lot of opportunities he did not get. I think they're on the court. They're responding well. Emotionally, they didn't bode well at first, but they're starting to get over it, and uh, I think just give them some more time to adjust, and uh, they can continue to be very big parts for this team, even better than they were with LeBron here. Yeah, because now they're 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 starting to play their own <laughs> games. Now they're not just waiting on LeBron to set everything up. So I agree with exactly, what you said. Exactly. Now, as far as the the fans are going, I'm seeing that you guys had a some home games. I believe you guys have played seven home games. Um, I think so. Yeah, six or seven, something like that. And you guys have sold out twenty thousand five sixty two every time. Uh, you know what? What's the secret, in your opinion? Like, what you know? What? Why do you think the Cleveland Cavaliers, after the best player in the NBA, the franchise player left? Why do you think that the team is still being supported so much by the faithful, and why uh, are the Cleveland Cavalier fans supporting this team so much? Well, you, you, there were stories. You know, we, we did not have very high attendance before LeBron got here. But at the same time, we still, I mean, the Indians had just dropped out of contention, and a lot of people were still going to their games as well. I think it's just a time, you know, people, they were obviously not happy with what LeBron did. They all, you know, they thought he was wrong to do it that way. And they, they still want to support this team and Dan Gilbert in any way they can. And the big part of it is to spend money on their gear, go to the games especially, because uh, when you're at the game of the crowd, that that's your sixth man, really. I mean, you got the five and the court and then you've got the crowd i mean that is what drives your crowd at the game you got to have a good home crowd and the people here understand that you know cleveland sports in general i mean they do not have a good reputation and uh but we uh we have very faithful fans here cleveland sports um in general does not have a very good reputation you know for being very good or you know at glory but um this is still a big sports town anyway people love their teams and uh and I, I was pretty surprised that we were able to sell out this many games anyway. But then again, you had a lot of people, um, they bought season tickets this year thinking LeBron will be back. But it's not just them. It's the guys buying the rest of their tickets. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what the secret is. All I know is the fans here, they love this town. And, uh, well, right now, I mean, the, the Indians, they aren't, they aren't good at all right now. And they're probably not going to be for a few years. The Browns are still developing. And, uh people still love to go out and watch some basketball because that's what it was here for seven years. Everybody just loved the prospect of LeBron becoming, uh, you know, this homegrown kid becoming one of the best players to ever play, supposedly. And uh, basketball just became a, a bigger part of the city than it ever was before. And I think people, they, they really miss that, and they still want want it to be a big part of the city. Yeah. I, I My heart goes out to the Cleveland Cavalier fans um, for what they had to go through this summer. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get to that in a minute.